If you try to paint figuratively, that is to say, if you sit down when you're a beginner and you go, oh, I'm going to paint a tree, there's a sort of like 95% chance that you're going to be disappointed. Even people who have painted hundreds of trees are still quite likely to paint a tree and say, what? That doesn't look like a tree. Hi everyone, Diane here, welcome to my studio. Today we're going to do a sort of semi-abstract kind of surface design painting and uh, I'll tell you first of all what I'm going to be using. Uh, Art Nouveau Kuretake set, um, three brushes probably, a cat's tongue, which is this one's from Zen Art, you can get that on Amazon, uh, draw well, uh, number five round, any brand will do, um, and this is a Princeton Aqua Elite. Uh, medium size, so size 12. And I'll probably use, as a good possibility, I might use one of these fine liners. We've got Micron, we've got Winsor & Newton, we've got Stettler, and we've got Tombow there. They're all great. Nothing to choose between them. I might use a white pen like this one. This is a Uniball Signo gel pen. Um, and I also am quite likely to use some of these. This is... Um, uh, Poetic brush pens. I've got a lovely selection of colours of those. I don't have very much of this kind of thing, but I do have one set of those. Which I was sent actually for free, and it started me off on a on a devious journey. Um, big pot of water in a mason jar, and away we go. Basically, sheet of uh, etcher watercolour paper. This is cold press um, cellulose. Doesn't need to be anything fancy because of what we're going to do is. Basic, basically basic. This is for everybody, beginners and uh, improvers, and just for the heck of it, just for fun. So I think I'll probably start with a nice big brush and uh, I'm going to sit down. Ah, I wish my ears would stop whistling. Um, and just pick up colors, um, depending on what I feel, uh, will go together. Am I going to have a blue theme or am I going to have a red theme, a pink theme? What am I going to do? I don't know. Um, uh, do, 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 do. Um, well, it's quite important to start somewhere. So let's, let's put a little bit of this red with this um, burnt sienna, shall we? And I'm going to just paint a circle. It doesn't have to be an accurate circle just any old circle. And then without really rinsing off the brush, let's pick up a, a bit more of a color and put that on. And you can see how I'm twisting the brush in order to get a, a circle. So um, let's go into the pink. I'm still not washing my brush because I want a variety of color. And I'm not gonna be you know, um, fussing about the, the roundness. What I will say though, is that we don't want too many colors. So you have to limit yourself at some point. Can't go into all of these. Uh, so we have to go back or go for a neutral, you know? So like this. And you'll really enjoy this because the colors if you can get hold of this set, I think it's going to be available soon. It's been off uh, being, um, what's the word, out of stock. It's been out of stock, but I think it's coming back soon. Um, this set, though, it actually doesn't have much in the way of yellows, does it? I don't see a yellow there at all. <laughs> so we'll put some lime green in, I think, shall we? And we put some up here as well. And maybe we'll put some here. So, and maybe we'll put some here. Okay. I think the cat's tongue can retire now for a minute or two and we'll go to the next brush down. And um, what I, I'm going to do now, I think, is go into some of these circles with some more 
colour for the centres. And it'll look different, you know, that looks different from that, although it's the exact same paint. Similarly, that one. So you could put the same colour in all of these and it would look different in every one because what's underneath it is going to influence it. It's an influencer. So I'm just going to play. This is all play. I'm not telling you what to do. I'm just, the idea is to just give you ideas, you know, and um, let you uh, fly. If you try to paint figuratively, that is to say, if you sit down when you're a beginner and you go, oh, I'm going to paint a tree, there's a sort of like 95% chance that you're going to be disappointed because even people who have painted hundreds of trees, like me, are still quite likely to paint a tree and say, God, what? That doesn't look like a tree. But if you just paint circles and all you're doing is concentrating on the colour, um, it doesn't matter whether it looks like a circle or not, does it? Doesn't matter what it looks like. So just put them anywhere where you think, you know, where there's a hole. And you can be as colourful or as monochromatic as you like. You don't have to have lots of different colours like this. You could have, you could go only blues. And um, yeah, just think about bubbles or something while you're doing this. So I was thinking today about, I've been um, thinking about this book that seems to be getting a fair bit of attention at the moment. It was written 10 years ago um, by someone called um, Austin Cleon. I don't know if that makes me think of Klingon. Austin Cleon. I don't know if that's how you pronounce it. Um, and it's called Steel Like an Artist. And it's about what, what the difference is between being original and copying. And when, when, um, what's the difference between uh, being inspired by somebody and copying them and so on. And I haven't read it yet, although I'm probably going to try to. I can get hold of a copy. It's an interesting thing, and a lot, a lot, a lot of people are talking about this, especially with AI coming along and um, making us <coughs> wonder what um, originality actually is, and is there any left, you know? Um, and the reason why I'm mentioning this is because I wanted to talk about my personal uh, feelings about originality. And <coughs> I don't honestly think that there's anything original under the sun. So really, it's a bit of a moot point. It is one of those arguments which is going to go on forever, but which actually, when you think about it, there isn't ever going to be any answer. Um, and it's been going on for a long time. There's, um, I don't know if you've heard of T.S. Eliot, who was a poet uh, in England in the last century, a very important poet who was very original, but he often, by his own admission, took ideas from other places, including Shakespeare, and put lines, complete lines, into his poems from other poets, and did it on purpose, and did it knowingly, and did it with an artistic flair. So 
Yeah, and then there's another person, and he's quoted in this book that I was talking about um, by Austin Kleon. Hang on. Um, he quotes T.S. Eliot, and I checked it because I thought, oh, it's uh, a bit strange. I'm surprised that T.S. Eliot would say something like that. But he did. He said, you know, all about that. Um, anyway, so... Then there's this other person who I hadn't heard of called Jim Jarmusch. I think that's how it's... Well, I don't know if that's how it's pronounced at all. Might be, might not be. Who is a famous film director. I'm not very up on films. I don't mind admitting. It's not something that I know anything about. I don't know any of the famous directors and everything. But he's very interesting. He's the same age as me. And he's been doing a lot of films over the years that are very highly thought of. He's a very artistic director. And um, he said that you should uh, take in... He said, steal from... And maybe it was even him that started Mr. Cleon off on his book idea. I don't know. But he says... There's a quote anyway that says, um, steal any idea, anything, everything that you come across, steal it and make it yours. And the thing is, though, you see, I mean, why call it stealing? Because isn't it just taking inspiration? If you uh, are going to, he says, steal from the clouds and the rain and the sky and the branches on the trees and everything... But that's not stealing, that's just being inspired. So this is just semantics. That's what I wanted to say. Of course you can be inspired by everything. And then um, I thought, okay, well, how? what am I going to be inspired by? How does it work for me? What do I do to inspire myself? And what I do is I, I look um, around me for an, an image that is a starting point. So it might be a real thing, like a plant, like we did la la lavender the other day, or it might be a painting by somebody else or a print or a photo or even a piece of music or something like that, but one thing. And then um, I try to incorporate into that something else. So... Um, Two things, you know, I, I, I steal a piece of lavender from nature and then I steal, I don't know, a Van Gogh rendition of the sky and I try to link them together. That's sort of what I mean. So here we are, we've got lots of circles and we've got some leaf type patterns and now I have to think about what I'm going to do next. Okay, so I'm going to start picking up some of these lighter colours, which are very much like a sort of pale gouache um, thing. I think they're fairly trans... Uh, what's the word? Opaque. And I'm just going to start putting in some embellishments. And we'll see how that works out. And again, it'll look different on uh, different colours. You know, there's a slight sort of variation depending on what's coming through from underneath. It doesn't really look pink, does it? It almost looks white. Creamy colour. So I was just interrupted just now by um, a friend who had come to cut down some of our hedge, try to reveal a little bit more light. And uh, so if I suddenly seem to be detached from where I was before, it's because I can't remember what I was saying. 
So I'm just also going to put in some more leaf shapes here and just generally um, playing around really. And for, for people who are relatively new to painting, this is a really good way of learning all about, um, uh, what do you call it? Um, paint control, water control, color, brush, handling. Some people hold a brush really close to the tip, uh, to the um, ferro on the ferrule like that. Some people hold a brush further back. And as you learn, you'll kind of find your own comfort zone. Maybe a bit of contrast using something like the navy blue here, dark, darker color. Like everything else, you don't know where it's going to take you. Until you get there. But you do need some dark colors and some light colors, some blues and some reds and just keep building it up. You can see why you don't, you don't need um, an expensive paper for something like this because, well, you just don't. You're not expecting anything of the paper really. And it's a good idea to have something handy. I've just remembered I put this handy for myself so that you can get some inspiration from other things that you've you've sort of done before. So I had forgotten this idea of having a, a branching stem like that across the paper, across the circle, and then sort of leaf shapes. Hither and yon. quite interesting. It's quite fun. You can um, put in the veins on the leaves if you want using the point of your brush or you could use your brush pens if you're not very confident about getting the very fine line. But it is definitely a case of practice makes perfect. Can you hear the birds? 
We're very lucky here because I'm able in the summer like this, I can sit in the studio here and um, have the, the door open, although my allergies don't prove, but I, I can and just listen to the birds and there's very little other noise outside. That's our cockerel saying cock-a-doodle-doo. But traffic and so on, we've got very, very little. We're very lucky. So we just keep building up and building up. As we go along, I'm using the darker colours now to go on top. Um, I think maybe I'll put a spiral on this one. Oops, try not to touch it in the wrong place. And as you go along, you'll sort of realize where you need to make things darker, perhaps. It has a sort of vaguely um, fruity appearance, doesn't it? These red ones kind of look a bit like cherries or rowan berries or something like that. He's really going cock-a-doodle-doo. And sometimes if you feel you've done something wrong, you can go over it a bit, tone it down a bit like that, for example. So having got to this point, you might be saying to yourself, okay, I, I don't know if I want to do any more paint with a brush. Perhaps I want to switch to ink, something like that, maybe. Or you might want to think about doing something with a brush pen because you can use these to make lots of dots and things maybe much more easily than with paint smaller brighter I wouldn't like to say whether or not they're going to be color fast but for this purposes of something like this we don't mind, do we, if it's not going to last for a lifetime. Wow, that's bright. I would say that was probably too bright. I'm going to put some green on top of that. Quite like it in little dots. You can get away with it being super bright like that. Um, about some pink, maybe? No, not that colour. Now we can put little tiny leaves, which is almost impossible to do 
using a paintbrush, really, very fiddly, but we can do them like this, can't we? clean that off there. I think I must have put my hand on that. Very easy to do. Usually it'll come off. And you know, this is the point at which I personally tend to get a little bit stuck and I tend to think, I think I need to take a photocopy and decide what I'm going to do next. That's what I often do at this point. Because you're looking now for closure. <clears throat> What's going to be, what are the things going to be that you're going to do to finish this off? Are you going to do a lot of white lines? like that, or are you going to continue with little leaves and dots and bits and pieces and lines and stuff? Um, how are you going to do it? Are you going to come in with, with um, a darker pen like this and, uh, and really kind of... <sighs> yeah, well, I'm going to take a photocopy because I'm going to try more than one solution. So here are three photocopies that I took. This is where we left it. And uh, I was hungry, so I went to have lunch and uh, came back, made three photocopies. And this is how it works for me anyway. So I, I looked at the photocopy of this and I thought, what shall I do? And so my first go-to is grab a black pen. I tried some lines, some shapes, and uh, got some circles and things here and sort of thinking, hmm, don't know, not sure. So put that aside. And then I thought, okay, still using the same pen. What about if I gave these shapes some stems and turned them into flowery shapes? So I did that and then I started doing a few doodles on some of the other shapes and thinking, well, this has possibly got potential. And then I thought, well, supposing I tried it with paint instead. Instead of this, ditch that and um, just take some delicate colours similar to the flowery shapes and, and try that. And that I actually think is best of those three options. So I would have made a um, significantly different painting if I had gone with my first um, option and put it straight on to here. Now I'm not saying this is a work of art in the sense of obviously this is not something that you would um, undertake to sell or make prints of but you you might you might be happy to turn it into a card or or to uh, put it up for a little while in your living room or something or or to I don't know you know but whatever you're much more likely to want to do something like that with it if if you're happy with it, obviously. Um, so yeah, it would have been a shame had I gone with the black because for sure it would have ended up being cut up and made into bookmarks, which is not a fate worse than death, but it is not, you know, uh, not what we hope for for all of our offspring, is it? We rather hope that our children, our art children are going to be, you know, relatively um, pleasant to be around. So anyway, so I'm just putting some narrow stemmy kind of lines underneath these flowery kind of things and we'll make them match. So where we've got a yellowish, greenish flower, we'll give it a matching stem, I think. 
So like this. You can make them a little bit brighter than the colour of the flower if you want. This one here I forgot, so we'll give him Okay, has everybody got a stem? You haven't, have you? I'll put one here. Right, we could give some of the leaves a few stems and add a few as well if we wanted to. Okay, so that's um, that's where we're at there. And then um, let's use these as kind of um, enhancements. So for example, we've got, this one here is very sort of blank and bland. So we can just go over it to give it some, I hate to use that word texture, which seems to me to be a somewhat overused word at the moment. It seems to be coming into practically every sentence in some places, but anyway, so yes, a little bit of texture. And um, we can come in here with some sort of leaf shapes, petal shapes, whatever. It doesn't really matter, to be honest, what the shapes are, as long as they do the job, which is to bring variation in the surface. We call this surface pattern for a good reason. I was looking at um, the uh, website for there's a company called Anthropology, which seems to have become very popular in England. And they're, they're kind of like a 21st century habitat. Everybody buys everything from them because it's expensive. And uh, they're, they are into surface design. And quite a lot of the mugs and tea towels and things that they sell um, have this kind of pattern on them. And as some people have said, oh, your designs would make very good uh, curtains, bedding, and so on and so forth. Yes, this is true, but mine and a million others, I'm afraid. There's a lot of competition out there to get your design on a surface somewhere. Coming to you in a surf coming to you soon in a surface near you. Coming soon to a surface near you. That's right. Coming soon to a surface near you. Anyway, so that's a, a bit of that. And then let's have a bit of beige. What should we do with that? We could do some circles and some lines. I think the main thing is to relax and have fun, really. I think it is worth doing, even if you don't sell it. I think sometimes um, you can get very hung up on the idea of it's only worth doing if, if I can find somebody else who will pay me money for it. And um, I think that's probably a mistake I made early on in my painting life. I didn't quite think that it was valid to just paint for me, have to, uh, you know, share it with somebody. And that's why social media is so good nowadays, because you don't actually have to sell your work in order to get it out there and share it. You can just put it online which I think is really wonderful. I think that's that's great because then you think, oh, you know, I've spent the time making this design or doing this painting. And if I don't share it, then um, nobody will ever see it and it'll be like time wasted. You can't help but think that sometimes, can you? Um, but with social media, of course, you can share it. People don't have to pay to see it, you don't have to have an exhibition, you don't have to wait for months before you get to put an entry in a local show, you know. Okay, so that's a bit of beige, and then maybe we'll have some, some greenish. I think probably, um, I don't want too much. I'm, I'm going to stop soon because I'm beginning to get bored. And you know, when they say, how do you know when to stop a painting? When is it finished? And I would say personally, when I don't want to do it anymore. Or 
or when I don't want to do it anymore today, or yeah, when I want to let it dry, or when I'm when I've disappointed myself, or um, oh, I don't know. I'm talking complete rubbish. This is what happens when you get up at five o'clock in the morning in my world. I know I've told you this before, but uh, I'm going to try and get some, um, what do you call it, some CBD to give to Ruby, my dog, to try to help her to calm down and sleep a bit better. Um, because me, at the moment, she's waking up at five o'clock in the morning and I have to get up because she barks her head off and won't stop. And then she uses the uh, house as a bathroom. And uh, then she starts the other dogs off barking. Yeah, it's good. We put some light marks on and then that makes the dark ones stand out a bit more. Um, let me see. Have we come to the end of my possibilities? Probably not. We can probably go on, but I think some of these should stay plain like that. Um, this one probably needs a... That's no, not the right colour, is it? Uh, da, 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 da. What colour is that? That's dark. Let me make it with paint. Yeah, that's better. And this one here. So you get the message, don't you? Deconstructed because the leaves don't attach to one another or in fact anything else. Um, and just a surface design. And you can, um, where's my pink? You can go around the outside, no, that's not dark enough, around the outside edges of circles to make them more definite, like that. Or, and we haven't done any white yet, we could take some white and we can, sometimes that really makes things stand out and look better. So for example, here where this is a sort of fuzzy line. I'm not sure if I like that. You might be able to improve that by going over it with white. Might make it worse, which is where your photocopy comes in. But I can't keep you all day while I play, because I'm sure you'll be very excited to get on and do your own painting now. So I don't know, I think that looks better. I think that looks better, yes. And, and we can, uh, where was I going to put, I was going to fill in some spaces. Where was I going to fill them in? What was I going to do? Was it here? Just a couple of them. You could use paint for that as well. You don't have to use a pen if you haven't got one. We could go around the outside here as well, like we did over there, because it's a similar thing. And you can go on and on. I'm going to stop now. Uh, yes, I think I am. Although, you know, you could probably stand to have a few more of these. The little pink leaves are quite pretty, aren't they? With their little doodahs. Who has just come in? And oh, that's a dog drinking. I hope that's Ruby. No, that's Lottie. Yeah, that's what I meant to say. Yeah. Thank you, Lottie. Okay. Okay, I think that'll do. And, uh, I am going to let you go and say thank you very much for being with me and please don't hesitate to like and subscribe and turn on notifications and become a member and visit us on Patreon and so on. And also our new website is up and running. It's been uh, updated and made more easy to navigate. And the other thing is please 
support Doodle Wash for next month, the uh, watercolor, um, World Watercolor Month is next month, and we have been featured in Doodle Wash. There should be an article appearing about me soon, and um, we have our products, that is to say, a mug and a pouched pouch for sale, all the profits of which, all the profits of which go to the Art for Children uh, Foundation that um, uh, Charlie, Charlie O runs. I can't remember his last name, O something. Charlie O, he calls himself. So, yeah, that's a great thing, isn't it? So I'll let you go and uh, I'll see you again soon, everybody. Ah, finished at last. Bye for now. Bye everybody. Bye bye. <laughs>